They say that the prophet Nostradamus foresaw the killing of JFK, the rise of the leader of the Third Reich, and Napoleon, France Revolution, and etc., etc. But let's take a look what the Nostradamus has in store for 2022. Welcome back to Day Talk, and this time on the New Year's special. Believe it or not, we have once again as our co-host, Miss Alexandra from Strike the Truth blog. Hi, and Happy New Year. Before we go more into the subject, please leave us a comment if you know any of Nostradamus' uh, prophecies. What do you think about them? Have he actually, has he actually been right in the past also hit that subscription button so you won't miss any of our channel's content and in order to achieve that hit that notification bell and leave us a like so alexandra is nostradamus familiar to you uh, yes he is very familiar what do you think about his credibility I would love to say that it's questionable, but a lot of his prophecies have come true. Well, at least that's what they say. Uh, we have to realize that the guy wrote his and published his book uh, 1555, which was, uh, help me out here, how is this pronounced? Le Prophetie. And it was written in a form of 942 poetic quatrains that allegedly foretold the future. So as far as I have understood, every single prophecy is this kind of a poem form. Yes, but they, you know, predict certain interesting events. We're gonna read a few of the poems that allegedly are going to come through during the 2022 or at least in the near future of 2022 and you can then decide yourself that how clear this kind of prophecy is although the hindsight is always 2020. Yeah and I mean the way they were written these prophecies as well you know they could apply to several events I guess so you know they're quite open to interpretation he wrote what did you say 995 942 942 so i guess from 942 poems a few of them could be written in such a way that they could be applied to events that have happened in our history well they certainly have but let's now look to the future instead of the past and let's start this quite worrisome prophecy about the invasion of France. And as, as we all know, it's very difficult to pin down exact dates with Nostradamus and his predictions as they are based on astrological movements. You see this guy foretold or foresaw the future based on astrological maps that he draw based on the places of the planets and stars. So this is quite sophisticated process that he had there. But he did predict war somewhere around 2022 in Europe. And that war would reach the borders of France itself or herself. That's actually interesting because aren't we facing a European crisis right now that we talked about? Yeah, uh, we talked about a few episodes back about this Ukrainian crisis that might, according to some experts, escalate to an open warfare between uh, Russia and Ukraine. The Russia being an aggressor somewhere early on 2022, most more precisely somewhere in the end of January or February. And there are worrying uh, aspects to that for sure for a world perspective and some say that even it can lead even to a World War III type of scenario or at least a huge war in Europe. It's funny you talk about France because a few weeks ago I was reading that 
President Putin was saying to President Macron of France that uh, Europe is basically giving weapons to Ukraine to give it arms for war. Yeah, I remember you mentioned something about it. And now when we read this prediction here or a foretelling of the 2022, it sounds a bit eerie, doesn't it? I'll read the poem out to you and then you can tell me what you think it means. All right. Blue head shall white head harm in such degree as France's good to both shall our amount. Yeah, uh, this is one of those things that I mentioned in the beginning that there are these poems and they're, okay, the Russian flag is blue and uh, white, as is also France. So I guess if you think about the flags, they have similar themes there. And uh, the blue will harm the white here in such a degree as France could the both shall amount. I think that there was a theme in in Nostradamus' predictions or sites for the future where the threat usually came from the east. So I'm just saying that that tied to this kind of prediction and this tied in a way to France. I don't know. Uh, certainly during these testing times in Europe, I hope it's not true, but you know, it's not that far-fetched. No, I mean, you're right that the situation right now in Europe is quite unstable. But then again, you know, France itself was one of Europe's superpowers in a way back in the good old days. Same like with England and Spain, they tried to conquer a lot of places. So couldn't, couldn't this particular prediction even allure to some other conflict that happened a few hundred years ago? Yeah, or then there's a possibility that this has no weight whatsoever in the real world. Yeah. But let's let's jump to the next one and uh, let's hope that this is a bit more positive than the, oh, it's not. Inflation and starvation coming. So another stark possibility that Nostradamus warns against is the rising prices in a failing economy. This actually sounds realistic as some uh, or many at experts of economy has been telling that these central banks' policies to control inflation and, and the prices are starting to bite themselves in the ass and we are in the brink of hyperinflation in the world. Goddamn. Yeah, I, I have heard of that and I can attest myself that the cost of living has gone up considerably con compared to a few years ago. It has, and the, the cost of gas also, at least here in Finland, has gone into insane amounts. Like one liter of gas is around two euros when it used to be like one year ago somewhere of 150 to 160. Yeah, that's an insane jump. And, you know, the thing is that our salaries haven't gone up. So, of course, people who kind of live day to day and they don't have any savings could very well start go into starvation if the prices keep going up and they can't afford the cost of living. Yeah, and as we all remember from the history, the Germany's hyperinflation was that the prices could move up like triple and even fifth times during the day. So the money in a hyperinflation situation lose all of its value. Well, let's see what Nostradamus says about it. Right. You're referring to this poem and it goes as following. No abbots, monks, no novices to learn. Honey shall cost far more than candle wax. So high the price of wheat that man is stirred, his fellow man to eat in his despair. 
That is a very grim prophecy. That is grim indeed. And contributing to this current situation that goes on in Europe is, of course, the Brexit and the recent years uh, that started from China's territory of Wuhan. And this has affected the prices all over the world and uh, and the businesses uh, as well. And what this has to do with 2022, this poem, I'm not entirely sure but you can see how it might describe of such a hyperinflation situation yeah well yes but then again you know we've had this particular situation quite a few times in history i mean like the great depression 1929 um there was in the 80s here as well was the recession in finland uh 1990s yeah or 90s yes and of course the world wide recession that started from the collapsing of the markets in the united states 2008 yeah so i guess this year or next year is going to be a bit different because of the recent events in the world which have put us in a more unique position that the government has just spent money and spent money and people have been out of work because, you know, they didn't have a choice. And very well, you know, people's moods are very unstable right now. People are tired. They're feeling restless. I don't know if they're going to eat someone for, you know, literally, but maybe they will get very angry and do something silly well let's hope it doesn't come to that but now we have gone through two of the predictions for 2022 and i don't think we're doing a good job for cheering people up for, up for a coming year are we we always have to be positive yeah let's see how positive the next prediction is and it is about the rise of artificial intelligence and I'll jump straight to the poem here where uh, Nostradamus is writing The moon in the full night over the high mountain. The new sage with a lone brain sees it. By his disciples invited to be immortal. Eyes to the south, hands in bosoms, bodies in the fire. That's a very interesting prediction. People interpret this mean specifically artificial intelligence or rise of the artificial intelligence. And we are now in a way really close to break it with the artificial intelligence and science is moving forward so fast. Of course, we all have seen movies of Terminators and and the predictions from Hollywood, what happens when the artificial intelligence achieve consciousness. But I think we're still quite a few decades short of having robots running around. Yes, I, I think but... we we are, but of course you must have seen those videos where the Russian or United States armies are testing those uh, dog-like robots that can't be kicked in a way that they fall to the ground and they can move in the different terrains and stuff. I have seen different videos of automatic weapons or weapons that can guide themselves like these dogs. And of course, these days, you know, robots are such a normal part of even daily life, like the Roomba. The robotic vacuum cleaner. And, you know, our phones are pretty much their own AI. You know, they can talk, they can find stuff, they can do a lot of things that we don't have to do for them. Watches that can monitor everything from blood pressure to telling you how much to sleep, how much you're stressed, that we don't need doctors soon for even, you know, basic physical checkups, because everything will be here. I've read of people having chips inserted to open doors, pay for things, 
have medical information stored. I mean, God knows AI is everywhere. That's yes, true. It is. It is true. And and the uh, current form of AI in uh, in somewhat sinister use are these facial recognition softwares that China is using through their camera surveillance systems in their their cities and towns. So that's definitely a part of artificial intelligence that is already so sophisticated that it can recognize faces and identities. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, these days we also have that program that imposes people's faces on videos and it looks quite realistic. Mm. So there's technology that is jumping uh, ahead with huge leaps all the time. I hope that the scientists and the militaries of the world are just careful enough that they don't make it too intelligent and too aware so we don't have to face Arnold Schwarzenegger like cyborgs that are killing people in 2029. I hope too. <laughs> Let's move to the next one which isn't any better than previous three because this time it's an asteroid impact and we don't know that if he refers to a small meteor small meteor shower or a catastrophic extinction level event but he says that this thing is coming and in 2021 we actually had a near miss with an asteroid 2021 GW4. Wow, I didn't know that. But the asteroid was only 16 feet across and didn't pose too much of a threat for the world-like worldwide extinction. Then we dodged a bullet, didn't we? Yeah, but uh 2029, according to NASA, we're gonna have a, another near miss. So could this Thing refer to that or is NASA wrong in their own predictions? The poem itself is fire do I see that from the sky shall fall. So does it have to be an asteroid? Can't it be like a plane accident or some tall tower falling? Like, you know, what happened in the USA? I guess that thing was also predicted by Nostradamus, at least according to some interpreters of these poems. But you just, I think, hit the nail in the head there. The thing that I be, keep saying that these poems are not that clear. So far do I see that from the sky shall fall. Yeah. For me, at least, could as easy be an uh, airplane on fire. Or, you know, something else. I don't know. Yeah. Or we had this uh, volcano erupting in Tenerife or Canarian Islands. I'll bet that spilled ashes and, and uh, fire to the sky that rained down from there. Could it be something like that? I don't know. Well, another interpretation could be, and I don't know if many people speak about this, but... Under Yellowstone National Park, I think there should be a volcano. And they say if that erupts, that will be a global catastrophe. At least I know in the world there's a lot of super volcanoes, which they are due to erupt at any moment in time now. Yes, and if you still haven't, go see our special short episode about the world's greatest threat super volcanoes so uh, let's move to our last prediction and let's start this time from the poem itself and uh, you guys there who are watching or listening write down in the comments your estimation as the poem goes on what this is all about and alexandra you can guess too after the poem is over so here we go like the sun the head shall sear the shining sea. The black sea's living fish shall boil all but boil. When Rhodes and Genoa 
how starved shall be, the local folk to cut them up shall toil. What do you think this is all about? Talking about fish shall boil and half starved shall be roads in Genoa. Global warming, maybe? I mean, mm -hmm. they talk about the earth heating up and we don't make so much food because, you know, the bees are under threat of extinction and our crops don't grow so well because of the earth isn't so fertile, I guess. Yeah, and this is all reality in a way at this current time. And I've been really skeptical during this whole episode about all of these predictions of Nostradamus, but now I have to rethink my position here. So this guy wrote these predictions in 1555, and I don't think there was a term as global warming going on then, and this guy is basically writing this thing out here in the poems. So we're already talking about the sea levels rising, the polar caps melting, the seas getting polluted, basically a ecological catastrophe. Yeah, th this could be something there. I mean, you know, they do say that the Earth is warming 1.5 degrees or 1.2 degrees up in the next, is it like 10 years or something? Yeah. You know, and we really need like, from what I understood about global warming is that scientists said it's already too late. Coastal cities will pretty much disappear. So everyone will kind of try to go inland as much as possible. As far as I understood, we are close that we are uh, going over the border where we can't anymore fix the damage that this global warming is doing. But maybe, just maybe, there is something with the Nostradamus's 942 poems. I think that it could be possible. Because the thing is that, you know, scientists can say that <laughs> time goes in a circle, like time isn't linear. So can we really according to quantum physics, say it can't be possible. Because if quantum physics say that, you know, time itself, we don't know how it works. We don't really know a lot about it. So, who knows? Maybe he can see in the future somehow. As far as I'm concerned, the time is saying that it is New Year and we need to start looking in the future and in our own self how to treat the nature and the world and the fellow man itself. Let's hope these predictions don't come true in 2022 or a near future at all. Let's hope that the cooler heads will prevail in the Ukraine and Russia conflict uh, situation and with the superpowers in the world. Let's also hope that it's not yet too late to take care of the nature and fellow man. Sorry, listeners, this has been a quite gloomy episode to start 2022 with, but what can you do when you're talking about the predictions of Nostradamus? From my behalf, I want to wish you a happy new year and let's hope this coming one will be better than two previous ones at least. Yes, and thank you, Tapani, for such an enlightening conversation. Thank you, Alexandra. Go out there and read Strike the Truth Block. But now hit subscription button. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our weekly episodes. Hit also a like and write down the comments. What do you think about all of these predictions? Are they just hogwash or is there something with them? Happy New Year. See you next week.